Well, hello. This is our final module together. This is module uh, seven, based on chapter six of Schulman's book, uh, The Skills of Helping Individuals, Families, Groups, and Communities, eighth edition. This chapter is all about endings and transitions and how appropriate that as we kind of end our time together, we're talking about endings and transitions. So with that in mind, let's get to work. Moving to the next slide. One other thing I'd like to say about endings, or a few other things. Endings can be difficult and painful. We have a general tendency to avoid endings and avoid the conflict and the challenges and the hurt of endings. There can be a sense of guilt for both the client and the worker, guilt that not enough was accomplished, uh, guilt that we didn't do enough to help our client, guilt on the client's part that they didn't work as hard as they could have, that they waited till the last minute to deal with some stuff, and those issues need to be addressed as well. There's a flow of both positive feelings of positive affect and negative affect. In other words, there's a sense of success and happiness and joy that the relationship has reached this place where the client is now able to do it on their own. At the same time, there could be some unresolved angry feelings, unresolved feelings of resentment, sadness, mourning, loss, grief, those kinds of things. And that's flowing through these final sessions and needs to be talked about. This is your chance to integrate both process and content. Um, teaching the client how to consider the relationship as a training ground, which is a more of a kind of a, I don't know, content issue. Um, we did this work together. You can do this work on your own. But also that the skills that are learned in the session can be transferred to new sit situations. So what they learned with us is not just happening in this room, but it could happen in real life as well. And so... We want them to recognize that even as we're talking about the feelings or the content and talking about what's going on, what they learned, their skills, et cetera, what happened in the session, there's also a process of kind of letting go, achieving independence, and feeling, you know, happy and sad. That's the ambivalence, right? And possibly guilty and mourning and those kinds of things. And so this is a real opportunity to practice our content and process skills. Schulman identifies some very specific stages of the ending phase. And these stages can seem a lot like Kubler-Ross's stages of grief and loss, right? Uh, that we talked about in, in previ a previous module. Denial, indirect and direct expressions of anger, mourning, trying it on for size, and the farewell party syndrome. Let's look at these briefly. First, denial. Saying goodbye is hard. And it's easy just to deny the feelings and focus on the content and ignore the process. We both, our client and ourselves, experience possibly some denial about the meaning of the relationship. And this must be addressed by the worker when it occurs. The relationship is valuable. It does have meaning. And something really powerful happened between the two of you. So don't allow your clients to just kind of deny that this is a painful time and move on, but make sure that they have time to really talk about their feelings. After the shock and denial, as Kubler Ross says, there's a second stage and that's anger. Anger emerges in most relationships of grieving and loss. And that anger can be either direct, such as I'm angry at you, or some kind of direct expression of anger towards you, or it could also be indirect, such as not showing up to sessions on time or resisting your advice or, um, you know, kind of distancing from you or being apathetic or being late for sessions. When these things happen, either direct or indirect expressions of anger, we need to bring them into the open and discuss them with our clients. We need to normalize them. It's a normal part of grief to experience anger at the end of a relationship. Third, mourning. Mourning is feelings of sadness or loss, which can be embarrassing for the social worker because in our society, we feel bad when people feel bad. And so we don't necessarily want to go, go there with people. So the way to deal with this is that we sometimes have to be the first to talk about our feelings of loss and sadness, to reflect on our own feelings. Now, we don't want to make this a session about us and our feelings, but we want to model for them a way of saying, you know, we've been close. This has been a good relationship. You've done some really good work, and I'm really proud of you. But I'm feeling kind of sad that this relationship is coming to an ending. And I'm wondering 
if you feel some of the same things a fourth stage of the ending phase is trying it on for size like a graduation a client will test new skills and new found abilities and begin to exert some independence almost like an adolescent leaving home they want to try out new things and establish some distance from the worker knowing that they can do this on their own now this can be difficult for workers sometimes even as we're kind of engaged with this person and we've cared for them and we've loved on them and we've given them you know a whole bunch of ourselves now they're kind of becoming independent of us and it can be difficult for us to let go we need to tune into those feelings that we have and recognize them so it doesn't stymie the process for our clients and finally there's a farewell party syndrome there's a tendency to, I don't know, throw a going away party um, and make it all positive. This is, you've been great. You've done such good work commenting or observing or thinking about or talking about only the positive aspects of the relationship. And that can be a way of avoiding dealing with the negative feelings of the ending and this transition to the real world. And so we need to explore both positive and negative feelings about the relationship, not just the positive, right? Uh, because there is sadness, there is mourning, there is loss, there is grief, there is guilt. There's a whole undercurrent of sad, negative emotions that we need to tap into if we're being careful. Remember, clients need to know that we love them and care about them that we're concerned with their success because when that happens and they need to come back for more work with us or potentially down the road with another social worker we've set the stage for recognizing that they can do this that relationships work and that this kind of helping is not a taboo but in fact is something that could be great for them but if they leave with a sense of unresolved issues then that process in the future may be hampered and so we're setting the stage for them to be successful down the road by exploring the feelings of loss and negative emotions during this transition period. There are some specific strategies we wanted to, to embrace or acknowledge or use as we come to the ending stage. Number one, we don't want this to catch up on us uh, unawares. We don't want to find ourselves in the last session. Oh, by the way, we need to talk about ending. How are you feeling? We want to prepare them a few sessions out. Now, if you've had a long relationship with them, like a year long relationship, this could be eight to 10 sessions. If it's a eight session, you know, kind of solution focused or cognitive behavioral kind of intervention, that might be two, maybe three sessions out when you start to talk about the ending. You want to emphasize the stages, the ending stages as they emerge. We've already talked about these stages, denial, anger, mourning, trying on for size and the farewell party syndrome. So we want to address those issues uh, as they emerge, as they come up and help the client see uh, what's going on. We certainly want to reach deep inside the client for their real feelings, not just the positive feelings, but the negative feelings, the ambivalence, right? The feeling of uh, this was great on the one hand, on the other hand, um, I'm sad to, to see the relationship end. And so we want to make sure that we're reaching deep inside or tuning into those clients' feelings. That may require that we first share our feelings. I'm very proud of you for all the work you've done. But there's also at the same time kind of a sense of sadness that we won't be working together anymore. I'm wondering if I'm alone or that's something you're feeling as well. Always making sure that we're not talking about ourselves and our feelings, but rather we're using ourselves and our feelings to help the client explore their selves and their feelings. And then we want to identify the process and content connections. What is happening in the room between us, the relationship is the process. That's what's going on underneath the surface. The content is what we're talking about, the skills that they're learning, the specific behaviors, um, you know, the challenges they're facing, those kinds of what's are the content, but that's not all we want to talk about. We want to talk about the process of the relationship between us and the process going forward focusing on both the content and the process in these final sessions. We should have been doing process and content work all along, but it's especially important as the sessions come to an end. We want to identify with our clients the major things that they learned in our work together. 
helping us evaluate the helping process. We want to reflect on the work that we did together, the things that were learned, the progress that was made. We also want to make sure that the clients are not being vague and superficial, but that we really dig into specifics, right? We want to look for real specific things uh, about the meaning of the relationship between our between worker and client and helping the client see that it's not totally dependent on us to accomplish these things, but that they did the work and they can continue the work. We also want to acknowledge that both of us are taking things away from this relationship, that they've taught us some things, that we've taught them some things, and it's been our truly reciprocal relationship that both of us matter. We then want to identify areas for future work. What's left to be done? We cannot solve every client issue that will emerge, that has emerged, is emerging, and will emerge. We can only do, uh, we can only focus on the specific goals that we set out front. If there's areas for future work, good. There's plenty of time left, uh, not necessarily with us, but they have a whole life ahead of them. So we want to let them know that it's okay to have unresolved issues and unanswered questions. We want to point them towards new skills and new knowledge that they've gained that they can use when they encounter new situations in the future. We want to try to solve all the last minute concerns, but rather help the client make a list of remaining concerns and then help them create a plan for dealing with those issues. Using the experience together, you can determine how to work on those once termination has is, is arrived, once the last session has ended. Uh, they don't need you through the rest of their life. They've learned enough in their session with you, their sessions with you, to be able to apply that learning to new situations. You also want to acknowledge their fears and anxieties and sadness at the, at the relationship coming to an end. Then, as we talked about already a little bit, you want to synthesize the process and the content. Here's what we worked on, but here's what happened. Uh, here's how you changed. Here's how we together were able to accomplish this and how this could continue into the future. Synthesizing both the content or the what and the how, the process. Remember, the process is often hidden. It's the relation. It happens in a relationship between two people. The content is often overt and it's what's brought to the session. And then we want to help them transition to new experiences and new support systems. We want to identify what it was about your work together that was important and then discuss how they can use other supports naturally occurring in the community to help them continue that process. As such, sometimes it's helpful at the end to help them identify those supports. What social supports are available to them that they didn't see before that you worked on together? What vocational or work-related supports? Are there things at work that could help them? Um, not just benefits like insurance or health club memberships, but also relationships at work. Uh, things that they do at work that could help them. And finally, we also want to think about uh, using counseling in the future, helping them to see that uh, they can they can do this again, that this relationship is not a one-off, right? Uh, remind them that the relationship between the two of you is something they could recreate, maybe with you if they wanted to come back at some future time, but also with another worker. They don't need to fix everything in the sessions with you. They just need to figure out how to fix things so that they can continue to work in the future. So finally, there are times when it might be appropriate to help them physically move on to, uh, to make it a transition, such as helping a kid move from one foster home to another, or move from their home to a foster home, or move from a foster home back to their family, or where you load up the car and move them, or helping somebody um, you know, discharge from a hospital or get oriented to a hospital or a long-term living situation. Uh, there are times when it might be appropriate to physically support them in that process. Now there's some variations on this, and so let's think about some of the variations of ending a relationship. Number one, how do you end a relationship that never really began, where there was no significant engagement? Well, you first of all need to bring with you as an as a emerging social worker, emerging professional, that this is an interactional approach we use. That it's not all on us, right? Part of it's on the client, and some clients 
we cannot reach for whatever reason, maybe we're the wrong social worker, or maybe it's an unreachable client, or maybe it's not the time to reach that client. Maybe they're not completely ready yet. We can only do the best we can with where we are. If this is your first client, you're a whole lot less farther along the process than somebody who's been this, been doing this for a long time. And you can only do the best you can with what you have and where you are in your professional development. Now, you also need to use your support systems to help you through the process of, of working with a very difficult client, such as supervision or I don't, checking in with your peers at the agency. You need to process your interactions and your feelings. And frankly, you need to honestly evaluate the working relationship. Were there things that you did wrong? Because there might have been. And if there were, how can you fix them in the future? Look, we don't learn just from our successes. We learn from our mistakes as well. And sometimes we learn more from our mistakes than we do from our successes. And so honestly evaluate your practice. Honestly evaluate your technique and your skill level. See where you're at by processing through it with your supervisor, with a coworker, or with a mentor. Sometimes endings can be caused by the termination of a worker's job. Best case scenario, um, you've left the agency. Middle case scenario, agency had some cutbacks and they had to let you go. Worst case scenario, you got fired. The worker got fired, right? In those situations, clients suffer. They've worked to develop intimacy and then boom, transition. And it happens quickly. It could be due to funding. It could be due to some, some you know, shutdown of, of programs or loss of a grant. We workers also have invested in this relationship. And so we need to take time to reflect on what we feel, right? And even help the transition with our client to a new worker, if possible. We need to focus on our own anger, our own pain, our own sadness, our own guilt, our own emotions. We need to tune into our own feelings about what's going on. And remember that we talk about expressing those feelings and thinking and working through those feelings as a way of resolving them. Well, if we won't do that in our life, why do we expect clients to do it in theirs? And so be honest about your feelings and talk to somebody about them. Keep the focus in the session during these kinds of transitions on the client. Make sure that you're not kind of venting feelings of anger at the agency for letting you go or whatever, that you are um, really focused on their feelings and their emotions. And any sadness that you feel um, would not be sadness about losing your job or sadness or, or, or anger at the agency for firing you or cutting back, but rather when you process through your feelings with the client, focus on their feelings. What must you be feeling? This has got to be difficult for you. I'm sorry that this has happened, right? And so you're, you you could say, I feel sad to, to, to leave you because you mattered to me. Uh, but that's see how that's focused on the client instead of on yourself. You don't want to be the focus of, of the feelings of the therapy. Some endings are caused by the death of a client. Keep in mind that there's a concept in counseling called secondary trauma. The first or primary trauma is that experienced by our clients. A secondary trauma is the, is the trauma that we feel as we observe their trauma. When we go through traumatic times, like listening to somebody talk about being sexually abused or um, you know, secondary trauma, listening to somebody being sexually abused or listening to the story of um, somebody's, you know, watching the death um, or some traumatic event in their life. There are repercussions for us as well. And so we need to be careful to focus on our own feelings of sadness and pain and guilt and other emotions that we're feeling. Because if we don't, we are at the risk of burnout from secondary trauma, but certainly at minimum, we'll lose morale. We won't be as effective because we'll be weighed down by the trauma of our clients. The agency, whenever there's a, a death in an agency or a suicide in an agency, needs to be very tuned into their workers and kind of help them work through these kinds of things so that they're not just, you know, what's time to move on. So the client died, big deal, let's move on. 
look it's tough when you when you've been working with somebody and they die it's hard so acknowledge it talk about the feelings those are normal and they can only be addressed when they're brought out into the open and they're left hidden inside they can lead to um, long term can lead to burnout short term loss of effectiveness midterm maybe even some depression and then finally burnout another one is suicide on a caseload more than once I have lost a client due to suicide it's incredibly painful and incredibly difficult we need to express our feelings of loss and sadness and grief and mourning and frankly guilt that we didn't do enough we need to be able to express those openly to someone who can help us work through those feelings in an agency it's important during uh, after a suicide or after some major trauma like death or um, something that happens major trauma in an agency to be able to, to have a time to express the grief and the sadness and the hurt and then to talk about that openly it's especially helpful to strategize next steps where do we go from here how do we use this to help us become better social workers to help our agency become a better agency other clients are affected by this as well especially in hospital units or living facilities or where there's a close-knit like a group therapy kind of environment where people are close to each other when somebody commits suicide it's very very difficult for other clients and so they need the time to express their feelings as well their sense of grief and loss both now and frankly for all of us in the future when similar things happen so that we understand what to do in the future now there are some ethical issues that we need to consider ethical issues with the end of life as more and more states are embracing physician assisted suicide we need to think through the ramifications especially the ethical ramifications for us as social workers and so the next slide I want to talk a little bit more about this there are several ethical issues we need to consider as we explore end-of-life issues as physician assisted suicide or the choice to self um, administer suicide as these become more hotly debated social topics social workers need to think through this as well so what are some standards that we can consider first of all we strive to enhance the quality of life we explore options with our clients we advocate for our clients secondly we have an important role in helping our clients consider end-of-life options and suicide or death is not the only option available so we explore all the options third clients should be able to make their own choices but only after considering all the options and their potential consequences Fourth, workers should not promote any particular means to end one's life but rather be open to a discussion with the client on issues of care on issues of death on issues of mortality on issues of the future we are consultants but we don't provide information uh, let's see fourth uh, no fifth we either participate with the decision to follow through with an assisted suicide uh, and I don't mean that we participate with the, the actual suicide because we do not do that that will be coming up in a second but just in the decision in the decision making process we participate or if we feel uncomfortable and can't do this or morally our moral code does not allow for uh, assisted suicide then we refer to somebody else that can help them think through this now we cannot deliver supply or participate in any way in the act of assisted suicide that's an ethical no-no we can however be present if the client makes that decision if the client asks us to do so and frankly if we can handle it uh, we may not really want to be present for an assisted suicide but it could be a good way to kind of hold the client's hand as they make the transition from this life to the next or to whatever's afterwards we cannot should not must not base our decisions on assisted suicide based on race and ethnicity religion age 
gender, economic factors, sexual orientation, or disability. We do not discriminate against clients on these things. And finally, this is a really murky ethical issue. What's legal, for example, in Oregon is not legal in Louisiana. And as more and more states kind of sign on to this, we'll find that the feds and the states have disagreement, kind of like on marijuana laws where the feds say it's completely illegal, but different states are making different decisions about marijuana laws. The same is true of assisted suicide. And so we need to be really, really careful as we tread in this area because there's potential for us to be brought up on some kind of charges down the road. And so we need to be carefully document, we need to seek supervision, we need to seek our agency's policies. We really need to think through this because there could be some ramifications, ethical and sanctions down the road if we don't. And we have to be prepared to defend our decision based on you know, everything that happened in a session. So documentation is really, really important in case you do end up in a court of law you can go back and you can say, well, wait a second, here's really what happened. I didn't convince this person to commit suicide. In fact, we explored it together because we believe in the client's right to self-determination. Well, that's a lot. 30 minutes of me weathering on, uh, as usual. And that's my last lecture, folks. So now it's time for you to move to the next elements in Module 7. Wrap up any unfinished assignments because time is coming to an end and take the, um, the final exam. Make sure that you um, evaluate the, the module so that we know how we did and whether this class is the kind of class we want to keep offering in the future. And let me say it's been a pleasure having you in class. Um, I wish we had been in person so I could meet you face to face. Uh, online is not always the best way to, uh, to have a relationship, but I do value you, my students. And, um, and I'm proud of you for sticking it out this far. All right, without any further ado, time to move on to the next elements in the module. Take care, bye-bye.